This is a presentation of One Login Training. And welcome to Working with One Login Smart Hooks, Part 2. Now that we've covered the basics, let's actually deploy one of these guys. And we're going to start with the pre-auth hook. First, we want to make sure we're clear on how a pre-auth hook works. Then we'll look at an example. A pre-auth hook takes a user's login context into consideration and basically changes their login flow depending upon what the context is. The context is information about the user's login attempt, where they are, the time of day, the device they're logging in from, and the way we change their login flow is to assign them to a different user policy. User policies in one login specify things like MFA options for a user or timeout settings, whether a user will have to follow a passwordless login flow or be prompted for MFA before they're prompted for their password. So, for example, if a user is outside a trusted network, they can be assigned dynamically a new user policy requires that they provide MFA. But if they're inside that trusted network, they will be assigned to their default user policy, which doesn't require MFA. That context looks like this. It contains the user ID, the user policy they've been assigned to. There's device info, location info, like that IP address and country code I mentioned before, and that risk info. Remember that risk score that we mentioned. So risk score of 30 means it's not quite like their usual behavior, but it's definitely closer to it than not. <laughs> and finally, context includes some reference IDs, that correlation ID and request ID that can be very useful when you're trying to debug the execution of particular smart hooks. At minimum, a pre-auth hook must return a user object, or at least provide user ID and their new policy ID for the user object. User ID, by the way, or user identifier, will match either their email address or their username. So let's check out our example. We're gonna change the user policy if somebody logs in from a mobile device. So this is a pre-auth hook that is already in the Smart Hooks API. Checks to see if a user is logging in from a mobile device, and if so, changes their user policy. The new policy might require a different authentication factor than they normally use when logging in from their desktops. Or perhaps it checks to see if they're connected to a VPN and coming from a particular set of IP addresses. The policy would be defined ahead of time through the one login admin UI. Its ID value is all that's being referenced in the script, and it's assigned to the constant mobile policy ID. So for the smart hook example to work, we need at least two user policies in our one login account. One that'll be assigned to the users might book something like what we have here. And in this case, it's requiring say YubiKey or one login protect when my lo users log in. Then the policy being referenced in the smart hook might look something like this. Also, in this case, requiring an additional authentication factor, but we want to require them to use something, say, like a biometric form of authentication. So we're going to check off WebAuthn for this particular policy. Again, we only reference the policies by their ID, and you can see the ID value in that upper left-hand corner above the name of the policy. So 299119 is the name, is the number of this particular policy, and we're going to need that in order to modify the script for the smart hook. Thus, all you really have to do at this point is update the smart hook, change user policy for mobile devices with the ID of the user policy that requires biometric. Time to see how to roll out that smart hook for real. 
All right, let's go deploy change user policy for mobile devices. Again, this is the one we were just looking at. If a user is logging in from mobile device, temporarily reassign them to a new policy that will do something different. So our demo purposes, we're simply going to require some sort of additional authentication factor just to make life easy. So let's go check out policies that we have here. We've got a default policy, which by default will be assigned to our user and it does not require any additional authentication factors. We also have magically created ahead of time for us. I created it. Another policy called mobile login here. And if we go to its MFA tab, we can see it does require MFA. So this is the one that we want to temporarily reassign them to within the hook. So we need its ID value up here. So we're going to grab that 299366. I can just copy to clipboard that way. And we're going to go back into Postman and overwrite the value being assigned to our constant mobile policy ID. So we have made the one necessary change to this particular smart hook. Now, before we actually click send up here and try to deploy it, there's actually another step we need to take. And this is only necessary when deploying pre-authentication hooks at this point. We need to go and create an initial minimum viable function. So it's basically a hook that doesn't do much other than return the user context. <laughs> so it takes in user context and returns it, so it's not doing a whole bunch. But <clears throat> it's going to basically kind of provide a shell. So once we execute any of these puts over there, they are simply overriding this existing function here. And by the way, you can only deploy one pre-authentication hook at any given time. So if you have like multiple things that need to go on, different types of logic, they actually all have to be written into the same hook. So um, again, in this case, we don't need to do that. We're just going to go with a pre-configured one for us, the change user policy for mobile devices. But we do need to first initially create this minimum viable function. It's using the API domain that we set. It is also using the access token that we've refreshed. And if you remember, all those pieces are defined over here in our environment variables, our access token, our API domain. And one of the values that we want to get from this is going to be this value here that we're going to use to assign to the pre-authentication hook ID. That's what will be used to reference that minimal viable function when we actually want to deploy the hook that we need, the mobile device one. So we want to execute create minimum viable function, execute please. We are going to grab this ID value from the output. I do not want to forget any of those pieces. And we are going to assign it to the pre-authentication hook ID variable over here. Remember to save. So now, basically set. We just need to go back over to the collection. We're going to go choose change user policy for mobile devices. Again, we have modified it to reassign to the mobile login policy we've already created. It knows that it's going to be overriding the hook that we just created based upon the hook ID over here and the variable that it's referencing. All we need to do is send. Ta -da! So we have now created our pre-authentication hook. Woohoo! Well, let's go see if we can test it out. So let us first have our user just log in from the desktop. So we'll see that like when they log in regularly, they are not prompted for MFA in this case. And I cannot type. I'm going to very carefully type the password. And we will see, voila, we are in. So logging in from the desktop, no problem. Next thing we want to look at is logging in from the mobile. Device. All right, logging in as Miss D DOS onto her mobile device. And providing a handy dandy password. Please continue.
And she is going to be prompted for one login protect. Ta-da! There it kicked in. So from the mobile device, she was prompted for one login protect. And this is her first time logging in from here. So she needs to set up a fun new code. But she is getting in. Nah, not going to use Face ID for now. <laughs> All right. Yay! We saw the smart hook at work. And we got prompted for MFA when we logged in from a mobile device. All right. So just to summarize, reiterate, what is necessary to deploy a pre-authentication smart hook? Well, first and foremost, you need that minimum viable function. Then you're going to grab the ID from that minimal viable function and assign it to a pre-authentication hook ID variable in your environment or wherever you're storing your variables. And of course, modify the pre-authentication hook that you want to use as necessary. Most likely you are updating a policy ID to match some policy ID you want to temporarily assign these guys to when the hook fires off and whatever condition is set to true. Then execute the put. Any of those pre-auth hooks that you want to deploy that you've made the modification to, those are all put commands. That's what you want to go and execute. That will override that minimum viable function and basically deploy your smart hook. Woohoo! But remember, you can only deploy one pre-authentication smart hook at any given time. So if you wanted some more, you know, complex logic, maybe combine a couple of the out of the box ones, you'd have to do it within the same script. You can't execute multiple of those puts. It will not be happy with you. So just keep that part in mind. And again, pre-authentication hooks require the minimum viable function. Don't forget it. Last but not least, let's talk about the user migration hook. So, Somewhat similar to the pre-authentication hook, it's taking in that user context, but in this case, it's really just paying attention to their username and password. The idea with a user migration hook is <clears throat> a user comes to log into one login. They don't yet have an account with one login. One login is going to take the username and password that they are providing and go try to authenticate them against whatever system we're trying to migrate them from. Whether that is you know, some competitor of ours, some homegrown system, whatever it is, the hook itself is hitting an API endpoint. And if the user is viable, then the hook is going to create that user in one login and set their password equal to whatever password they were using against the other system. Thus cleanly migrate them over to one login without them having to change their password. So hopefully not noticed then by the end users at all. So it is taking in context, in this case doesn't care about the policy, really just taking in that username and password, connecting to whatever the other system might be that the user is migrating from via an API endpoint. So very much dependent upon that other system, having some endpoint that we can connect to, to check, to see, is this user valid for this system? Is their right, this their right password, right? Basically, if that is true, then enable one login, connecting to one login, of course, to create that user account with the same username, with the same password and any other information we can gather, create them over within the one login directly, thus seamlessly migrating them over. So idea is that it has to return an user object with at minimum a username and password. Again, if that API endpoint can return other information like their first name, last name, email, whatever, then great. We can return that information as well and of course use that to populate user fields over in one login when we are creating the user. 
As far as deploying the hooks, they're actually much simpler. You don't have to worry about the minimal viable function. Woohoo! Okay, so you just modify the hook again as necessary. You're going to be updating a little bit of connection information, maybe, and then execute a post because that's what these guys are instead of a put that's used for the pre authentication hook. So execute the post for the smart hook that you want, and voila, you're off and running. Again, the same rule can only deploy one user migration smart hook at any given time, just as we could only deploy one pre-authentication smart hook at a time. But key difference, I don't have to worry about that minimal viable function again over in the world of user migration. So let's go take a look at some of those user migration hooks. And here we can see some of the out of the box user migration hooks that we have provided for you. So for example, here's one just connecting to some sort of external API. You can see they're really quite simple. I've got to modify some sort of API endpoint, maybe a token that it uses here. So those are some of the constants in this particular script. And then it just uses Axios basically to hit the endpoint. If it is successful <laughs> hitting that endpoint, then, and it got some data back, then it goes to create the user. So it returns the user object. So this is banking upon the fact, of course, that again, I'm hitting an API endpoint. Axios would work against it, so you might have to do a little dev there. And that it is returning first name, last name, and email address. You might or might not be able to control what the endpoint is returning to you. We also have some out of the box ways to maybe migrate from other systems that you might be using. <laughs> so these ones we have tested out. So again, maybe modifying some of uh, variables. You can have to specify like your Okta subdomain, define that as a variable in here. But you know, we've already pre-filled in the rest of what the endpoint should look like. And again, passing in the username and password to it. And if we get any sort of response and the response contains any sort of data, that means that that user did exist within that other system. And I got some information back about that system and I can pass it back on through to one login and create an account for the user within the one login cloud directory. So for these guys, again, don't have to worry about the minimum viable function. Just make sure I've appropriately defined either as an environment variable or within my script, some of these constants that will match only your environment. And then I just need to execute the post. But again, you can only deploy one of these at any given time. So if I had to check against a couple of systems, obviously I'd need to modify this entire script to do so. So keep that part in mind as well. This concludes the last part of working with one login smart hooks. This is a presentation of one login training.